Good morning from Hawthorne, California. It's March 30th at just about 7 a.m. Pacific time. Welcome to the webcast of the Iridium 5 mission carrying the fifth flight of 10 Iridium Next satellites. Uh, you are seeing a live view of Falcon 9 beautifully framed by a rosy dawn as we prepare for launch in just over 10 minutes from now. Uh, today's launch is scheduled for 2.13 Universal Coordinated Time or 7.13 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I'm Michael Hammersley, a materials engineer here at SpaceX, and I'll be bringing you coverage of the SpaceX launch for Iridium Next during this webcast. Uh, due to some restrictions from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, uh, SpaceX will be intentionally ending live video coverage of the second stage just prior to engine shutdown. Uh, we're working with NOAA to address these restrictions in order to hopefully be able to bring you live views from orbit in the future. And though we'll be ending the video coverage, we'll be continuing to cover the major mission milestones on Twitter, so please join us there afterward. Today's launch is from Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, and you can see the two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle standing about 70 meters tall, uh, which is taller than a 20-story building, there on the pad just after sunrise. Uh, it's a really clear shot. Usually Vandenberg is way foggier than this, so it's a beautiful, beautiful view here. Um, the first stage, which is the part that's not currently illuminated by sun, uh, provides the initial force to get out of the majority of Earth's atmosphere. Uh, SpaceX does not plan to recover the first stage for this mission. Uh, we will be performing a landing sequence, uh, a simulated landing sequence out in the Pacific Ocean, but there's no drone ship in position for recovery. Uh, so we won't be following it during the webcast, but you may hear call outs on the countdown net uh, while we follow the second stage into orbit. The second stage, which is the part in the sun right now, uh, takes the satellite from the edge of space and accelerates it to orbital speeds of just over 7.5 kilometers per second, or 17,000 miles per hour. That's 10 times faster than the bullet. On the very top of the vehicle, in the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, are the 10 Iridium satellites. Uh, for this mission, we will be attempting to recover one half of the payload fairing as part of our ongoing fairing recovery efforts. Uh, the ultimate goal uh, is full recovery and reuse of the entire vehicle. Uh, so recovering the fairing is an important step towards that goal. Uh, it's still part of a, an experimental program at the moment. Just to the right of the rocket is the transporter erector. That's what brings the vehicle out from the hangar uh, horizontal and then tips it vertical uh, to get it into position. Uh, it's going to recline to 77 and a half degrees a few minutes before launch. Uh, unlike our East Coast pad, which uh, retracts a little bit just at the very last second. A uh, quick status report, uh, Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since about T minus 70 minutes. Uh, fuel, uh, that's the kerosene, uh, is about complete on the first and the second stage at the moment. Uh, Falcon 9 burns a rocket grade kerosene uh, to get to orbit. Uh, but because you need oxygen to burn kerosene, and there's not much oxygen high up in the atmosphere, we have to take our oxygen with us. So we carry a super chilled liquid oxygen in the tanks. Uh, that liquid oxygen is currently being loaded. Uh, the first stage is about 90% uh, filled, and the second stage is about 60% filled right now. Uh, we'll be continuing to load those until just the last couple minutes before launch in order to keep that as cold as possible, uh, in order to make it as dense as possible to fit as much on the vehicle as possible. The Iridium satellites are currently a go and are, in, are on internal power. Uh, the Western Range is also a go 
uh, the Western Range operating out of Vandenberg, but providing similar support as the Eastern Range during our Florida launches. And the weather, as you can see, is currently looking spectacular. Uh, barely a cloud in sight, but we are keeping an eye on some upper level winds to ensure that they don't present a danger to the vehicle during ascent. SpaceX is launching 10 Iridium Next satellites to low Earth orbit today. And this is the fifth of eight launches to put that constellation into orbit. We started launching with Iridium in 2017. And after this launch, we will have put 50 of the Iridium Next satellites into those orbits. Uh, these satellites form a constellation comprised of six polar orbiting planes, each plane containing 11 operational cross-linked satellites. Uh, so you can see uh, in the image on your screen that a polar orbit means that it, each satellite is going to cross over the north and the south pole every time it rotates the Earth. Uh, this is opposed to if it were an equatorial orbit, it would be going uh, east to west um, or west to east sort of around the equator. Uh, when completed, uh, the Iridium network will be using a total of 66 active satellites as well as nine in-orbit spares. Each of those satellites weighs about 600 kilograms. And when the solar arrays are fully deployed, they have a wingspan of just over nine meters. In order to correctly position those satellites into today's orbits, uh, the SpaceX team has to launch right on time. So the launch window is only one second long. And if we delay for any reason, we have a backup opportunity at about the same time tomorrow morning. When Falcon 9 reaches its intended orbit, the vehicle will send commands to separate the satellites at about 625 kilometers in altitude. The satellites will be released one at a time, uh, about every 100 seconds. The entire sequence will take 15 minutes, and from there, the satellites will maneuver to their final orbits. Now we have a quick video from Matt Desch of Iridium explaining some of the unique features of the Iridium system. Did you know, right now, there are 3.8 billion people connected to the internet, which is nothing compared to the nearly 20 billion things connected to the internet. Not those things, these things. Small things, medium things, large things, and by 2025, that number may grow to 75 billion things. Stack those things and you could reach the moon three times. But did you know, Reliable internet to connect your things is not available on 80% of the planet. So on most of the planet, these things are out of reach. Did you know? Iridium low earth orbit satellites provide reliable internet connectivity to the entire globe, bringing everything within reach, no matter where it is on the planet. Iridium is the satellite way to connect things to each other. Through a small little data modem, embedded in all kinds of vehicles and devices and machines, um, we can make an internet connection to say where something is and how it's operating and in fact send commands to turn it on or off or, or control it. Did you know nearly one million subscribers are already using the Iridium network to track, control, and monitor farming equipment, fish tracking buoys, remote construction, wind farms, pipelines, global fleets, scientific research, worker safety, and millions of other things. We're gonna bring new technologies, faster speeds, easier to integrate technologies so you can put them into new services and applications much more easily than ever before. These new satellites with all their capacity, power, and speed are gonna be able to turbocharge everything we do and bring so much more. T-minus four and a half minutes to launch, and we've got only a few things left to do at this point. 
Uh, engine chill began at about T minus six minutes. That gets the engines to the, the cold enough temperature where liquid oxygen doesn't uh, turn into a gas immediately upon contact, which would make startup a bit tricky. Uh, the strong back is going to begin its lean back uh, shortly. Uh, we're currently finishing up propellant loading and pressurizing the tanks to make sure they can support the mass of the fully loaded vehicle. And that propellant loading is going to continue for uh, another couple minutes still uh, to keep it all as cold as possible. We'll also be performing an engine wiggle. Uh, that's testing the thrust vector control system that steers the engine during its ascent. Uh, you may also see a vent of gaseous oxygen from the strong back inside of about T minus 90 seconds. And you can see the strong back is, is beginning its retraction at the moment, uh, leaning back slowly there. That's going to continue until it gets to about 77 and a half degrees. At T minus one minute, the vehicle will transition to internal power. And from there, it will completely control the remainder of the countdown. Uh, the satellites are all still go. The range is also go. And the weather is looking great. Uh, if you hear the hold, hold, hold call, a backup launch window is tomorrow at 7.14 AM Pacific Daylight Time. Otherwise, the SpaceX team is excited for launch, uh, so let's listen in to the last couple minutes of terminal count. Stage one locks is closed out for flight. Stromback retract is complete. The Stromback is locked out for flight. Rock, verify range is green. Rock, range is green. Stage two locks is closed off the flight. Vehicles in South Line. ASTS is ready for launch. Falcon 9 and startup. Ground side gas closeouts complete. Stage 1 tanks pressing for flight. This is the LD on countdown 1. We are go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Propellant tanks, pressure flight. 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Power 
and telemetry are nominal. And we had successful liftoff of the Falcon 9, uh, as you saw. Uh, it's pitching downrange at the moment uh, to continue its ascent into orbit. Going supersonic right about now. And it'll be uh, going through max Q shortly. Go is supersonic. So we're decreasing the engine thrust to minimize the pressures of max Q, which is the point at which the rocket is pushing hardest against the atmosphere. Vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. And now that we're through that milestone, we'll be increasing the thrust of the engines uh, in order to uh, get to orbit. Uh, but while the atmosphere is still relatively thick, uh, we can prevent it from exerting too much pressure on the fairing by, by throttling the engines a little bit. We're also uh, chilling the Merlin vacuum engine. Head back engine chill has begun. And that call out means that we're bringing the engines down to the correct temperatures in order to prevent the liquid oxygen from uh, turning into a gas in the second stage as well. Uh, coming up shortly, we have a, a few events in quick succession. Uh, the first stage main engines will cut off, the two stages will separate, and the second stage will begin its first burn. And there you saw it. The first stage main engines cut off, the two stages separated, and the second stage began its uh, burn. Um, you can actually see, see the first stage uh, falling away behind the, the second stage for some of these shots. Uh, that's gorgeous. Uh, the first stage uh, will be performing a one-engine boost-back burn and continuing downrange for a simulated landing. And you just saw the... Second stage trajectory nominal. I uh, just saw the two halves of the fairing fall away. Good, good, from the boy. Uh, we will be attempting a recovery of one of the halves of the fairing today on our... Uh, fairing recovery ship, Mr. Steven, as part of an experimental program to reuse those parts of the vehicle. From just past T plus four minutes, Merlin vacuum engine is performing nominally, glowing red hot there in the vacuum of space. A uh, quick reminder, we will be uh, intentionally ending live coverage uh, or live video coverage of today's mission due to uh, restrictions placed on us by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So uh, don't be surprised when that, uh, that occurs at about T plus nine minutes. Uh, we will be continuing to cover the mission on Twitter uh, all the way through the second burn and deployment of the satellites at about T plus 50 minutes. at T plus five minutes. Second stage still performing nominally, and the trajectory is currently looking good. A couple interesting facts about uh, the first stage. Uh, as it's continuing its simulated landing. Um, this one first flew for the Iridium-3 mission, and the Iridium-2 and Iridium-4 missions also used the same rocket, which means that today 
Uh, this is our fifth launch for Iridium, for the Iridium constellation using only three rockets. We're now at T plus six minutes, which puts us uh, more or less exactly halfway through the second stage's first burn. Uh, the first burn is to bring the second stage into a parking orbit. Uh, that's going to be a, a, an egg-shaped orbit where the uh, maximum altitude at the top of the egg is about 625 kilometers. Uh, but at the bottom of the egg, the orbit is only 180 kilometers in altitude. The second burn that we'll be performing is going to circularize that orbit so that it's 625 kilometers in altitude the whole way around. Now at T plus seven minutes. Stage one, ATSS saved. Uh, the chamber pressure in the Merlin vacuum engine is uh, looking good, providing good power, constant chamber pressure, and still on track to its parking orbit. Uh, between the end of uh, the first burn and the start of the second burn, uh, there's going to be about a 42-minute coast phase in order to position the second stage to, to prep for circularizing that orbit. Uh, we will be continuing that coverage on Twitter. LOS, stage one, Vandenberg expected. At the time of the second stage, the satellite will have passed over Antarctica and will be just south of Madagascar for that four-second burn. Now just past T plus eight minutes. Second stage still performing nominally. Still on track for that parking orbit. And today is also the one year anniversary of the first time we flew a flight probe stage in two terminal guidance. Falcon 9 first stage. Stage two AFTSS saved. about a few seconds now from uh, the second stage completing its first burn. Uh, and we'll make sure that the uh, burn is good. Western Range assets expected. Uh, we have Zico. And we just got confirmation that the second engine cutoff event occurred. We'll make sure that we are in the correct orbit. Stage two, nominal insertion. And we're getting confirmation that we did, in fact, uh, get into the correct parking orbit. Uh, so though we're ending our live coverage now due to restrictions from NOAA, the mission is not yet over. So we'll be continuing to cover the upcoming major milestones on Twitter. Uh, that includes the four-second engine burn and the 10 satellite, satellite deployments, excuse me, uh, starting about 40 minutes from now. Uh, so overall, we've had an on-time launch. Uh, the first stage uh, successfully got the second stage out of the atmosphere, and the second stage is continuing on its trajectory uh, in a coast phase now uh, to get the Iridium Next satellites into their constellation. Uh, so thanks to the Iridium Next customer, Air Force for Range Support, and the FAA for launch license, and see you online for the rest of the mission.